Hi, everyone, and welcome. This is the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. It is Saturday, the 1st of September, 2018. The summer is officially over. Oh, well. <laughs> but we have a wonderful, wonderful guest for you today. We have Lou Martin, who has come to us from Ireland. Hi, Lou. How are you? Hi, Karen. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to take a moment to uh, introduce the people that are in the room. We have Celeste, we have Reinhardt, we have Michelle, Marlene, uh, Lila, Ian, Don, our wonderful YouTube monitor, and Dave, Christine, and Elisa. So welcome to all of you. And just to uh, give a few little housekeeping announcements, this is the Saturday Human Colony webinar. If you would like to become a member of Human Colony, go to hucolo.org forward slash webinars. And for $10 a month, you can support Human Colony and all of our endeavor endeavors, help us pay for our internet bills and you know all, uh, do all of our webinars. And all of that money is truly appreciated. For $10 a month, you have access to our free classes and all of the information we give. On Friday nights, Ian is running a the Hukolo channeling practice group. So if you're interested in learning to channel or you just want to have a group of people that you can channel with, go to Facebook and look for the Hukolo channeling practice group, send a um, invite, and then you'll be invited to the group. And then you'll get all the information on that. Also, uh, there is a book that has been made called From the Galaxy with Love. It's a light worker's handbook, and it's available on Amazon.com. It's available as a hard copy, as a Kindle book, and also as a audio, audio, audio book. And uh, that is all the culmination of Jim Charles's channeling. It was put together by Max Rempel. It's a very beautiful book. I highly recommend it. It's just a very good guide to where we are, who we are, what we're here to do, and, and I highly recommend it. And then the last thing is, is on the 21st of September, which is International Peace Day, we'll be working together with a group that I do service for called Mantras for Peace, and all day, for about five hours, starting at 2 p.m. EST. We'll have different people on. We'll have Lou, we're going to have Terry Rainier, we're gonna have Max, hopefully Jim, uh, myself, and some other special guests, and each one of them will be getting on and sharing meditations and mantras for peace. So please uh, be sure to check back. That announcement will start going out next week. So that'll be the 21st of September on a Friday. Okay. I think we're there. Yay. So, Lou, Martin. So, Karen, Newman. <laughs> so, welcome back. Thank you so very much. You've, you've come back by popular demand. You've been, just, since the first time you've been on, you've been very popular, and I'm so glad that uh, you popped into my, into my feed on Facebook, and I was able to discover you. Likewise. That's lovely to hear. Thank you, and thanks for everyone who... Uh, enjoys what I get to do with with uh, the channeling. It's a pleasure. Well, thank you. To yeah. the people, also just one thing to the people in the YouTube, we will be taking uh, questions from the uh, live chat. But also, if you look in the comments of the Facebook, or the excuse me, I have no words today. In the YouTube comments, I posted the link. If you want to come in the room, we have room for twenty five. So if you want to come in, you're welcome. So okay. yeah, yeah. So I had suggested to you that uh, maybe that we would start with some kind of uh, prayer or meditation. Sure. Um, yeah, because every day, everyone, if you don't know, if you don't follow Lou on Facebook, you should. But uh, he leads a beautiful prayer meditation five days a week for 30 minutes, and it's just a wonderful time to center yourself, set your intention for the day, and to just get into the right mentality to start your day. So you should really tune into it. And if you're in the wrong time zone, you can watch it on his replay, but it's a beautiful, beautiful sharing. I've, I've caught it several times, and yeah, I think it's a beautiful service you're doing there, so. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So you'd like me to start off with that? Well, sure. I, you, if you want to, you yeah. can maybe tell, if you do that, and then when you come back, when we come back, we can talk about what's going on with you, or we can save that to the end and go right to the channeling. We'll just see how you feel sure. when that's all done. Okay. Okay, all right, so good. Let's just uh, turn within, take a deep breath. All right, dear friends, God bless you. Here we go. Right, so dear friends, here come seven stars. Spiral down through time and space, touch the crown, take a nice deep breath. 
Relax and release. Relax and release. Relax and release. Down the seven chakra centers, dear friends, the crown, the third eye, the throat, the heart. Take another breath. Relax and release. Relax and release. Relax and release. Another good breath. All the way down now through the will center, this, the tummy, the sacral, the root, the hips, the legs, the feet, down into Mother Earth. Take another good breath. Relax and release. Relax and release. Relax and release. Dear friends, so here we are, the powerful moment of the 1st of September. God bless you. And it is a time of setting forth clear and conscious intentions. The energy here, dear ones, is of tremendous acceleration and change during this month, we would suggest. So it is a beautiful time, dear friends, to come together in like mind and with open heart, to recognize your oneness with all that is, with all of life, with the elements, with the four directions, dear friends, and with all of humanity. So take a breath into that. That I know and accept my oneness with all of life, and I give thanks to know and accept this, dear friends. We'll say that two more times. Take a breath. I know and accept my oneness with all of life. And I give thanks to know this oneness. Take a breath. Dear friends, I know and accept my oneness with all of life. And I give thanks to accept and know this oneness. So, dear friends, it's a time to vision of your highest future and of your greatest destiny to understand truly that you are the conscious creator of your joyous reality. And it is yours to choose to live as the victim of circumstances that appear to be beyond your control or to take your power back, dear friends, and to take joyous responsibility for your willingness and ability to consciously create a life of fulfillment and meaning. Dear friends, imagine that you have, uh, yeah, your guides with you here, one uh, in particular, a being of light that will now stand before you and take a breath into that vibration. The higher self, the soul, the spirit, or your loved ones, dear friends, taking form and just looking into your heart and giving you complete unconditional love perfect peace and total acceptance for your path as a conscious and evolving spiritual being. Breathe that in, take a deep breath. And we invite you to just say yes to life. Yes to what called you into this time and space. Yes, what called you into this body and into this lifetime. And yes, what has called you into this present moment, dear friends, that everything is working together for good that you are worthy and deserving of all that you desire. And dear ones, that you have a voice and a vision that can transform your life and your world. Let us love you. Let us guide you. Let us support you. Take a deep breath. Dear friends, we'll let you come back to this time and space knowing that something beautiful has begun and with love, it is always at the beginning. New beginnings are times of great hope, great vision, and great possibility. We stand with you, and we give thanks for you. We let it be, and so it is. Peace and blessings. Namaste. Well, that was interesting. That was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good place to start. And I think it's, uh, what, you feel like you're floating now. Yes, well, my crown is now completely opened up and tingling, so that's good fun. Yeah. 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 I think that um, we can never underestimate the importance of our alignment. You know, that needs to be it, our priority. Yeah. Yeah. And because because in that the whole your whole world shifts, your outlook shifts, your your you know, your perception shifts and 
when we're walking in that, then it's just it's just a joyous, blissful, you know, it's the anamana it's the anamana maya kosha that we have entered the bliss sheath, you know, of connection. Yeah. There's a word I never heard in this lifetime. That sounds lovely. Anamana uh, anamana maya kosha. There's five koshas in Hinduism, and they okay. talk about that. Uh, the skin is the first one, and, and I won't go through the names, but the skin and everything. And then as you go in, it becomes more subtle and more subtle. And finally, the last sort of sheath, the last covering that we have is this place where we are in our own bliss and we are truly uh, connected to our true divine nature. Right, so, like peeling the onion. Killing the onion, yeah. yeah, and as and we do that, and we do that through, uh, through our meditation and through our connection, and yeah, and you yeah. can tell where you are in your day based on your reaction to things, and you know, you're sure. in one of those, you're in one of those places. So yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, thank you. So okay, so Lou Martin, yes. I like to say your whole name. I tell it. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell me what's been going on with you. Where do you, because when I first met you, which is not so long ago, in the beginning of the summer, I think, right. you you were working on expanding your practice, and I've seen you just in a very short amount of time. You know, you're 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 doing more webinars, and you're doing lots of interviews, and and everything. So so what is your what is your primary thing that you're working on now? And and yeah. Yeah, well, you're right. I mean, it's been a good summer for me, and I'm very, very grateful. And and honestly, uh, our connection has certainly been a part of that. And I, 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 I thank you and thank Hukulo. And uh, Elsa is here, who's a friend of mine that I've um, had the pleasure of working with. Um, so, I mean, I do the one-to-one -one sessions with people for healing and growth and all that. And then we do little Zoom Q&A groups where I'll have four or five people on, and I'll channel for each person, and uh, we do that. And then the interviews uh, are, are ongoing. I'm actually chatting with a, a guy tonight who's lovely, uh, a Canadian chap from Aus who's in Australia, a journalist. Oh, great. Who, yeah, who had terminal cancer five years ago and has been um, cancer uh, clear for the last five years. And just a lot of um, what I deeply relate to, a lot of his issues around being a man and emotions and grief and integrity and responsibility and vulnerability and honesty and... So we're going to have a great uh, chat about all that. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, as you said, my friend, we're, we're, uh, these energies are opening up for all of us. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's really, it's great to be with such a conscious group. And um, I'm just, uh, I'm happy to entertain whatever the questions are. For me, it's just um, deeper and uh, clearer. And that's the focus uh, every day. And stand back and see what happens, you know. Yeah. The, I, I think that we had, there was one that was actually a question that someone had last time about being a man in this time period yeah, and yeah. dealing with the balance, the, the rebalancing of the masculine, feminine, how to be uh, genuinely yourself, but having the ability to um, share, you know, your feelings in a genuine way, and and. Can you can you maybe speak more to that because it seems like it's still active within you because it, it's come up twice and I know that it's, it's going to be in your conversation. I don't want to preempt your conversation, but maybe for some we have quite some men in our group, yeah. nice men. Yeah. Uh, but maybe talk to that. I don't know from them. Maybe they can also chime in if they want if this is something for them. But I think it's important because we talk so much about the divine feminine, the rising of the feminine, which is important as well. Right. But we don't. We tend to talk about it and not talk about the, the male sure. side of it. Sure. Yeah. sure. Well, yeah, I mean, I, 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 for me, Robert Bly was the, the great uh, teacher for me, and he's this uh, wonderful uh, poet. I think he's about 90 years old now from the States. He wrote a book called Iron John, and I uh, did his um, Gathering of Men workshop with him back in the early 90s, I think. Mm -hmm. And Bly is the one who said the doorway into a man's heart is through grief and grief is about building uh, a higher uh, emotional body so that you can sustain greater ecstasy and the thing is that um you know for me as a man um i've studied theater and acting and i've written music and performed and then do doing the channeling for 30 years so uh you know over and over again 
It's about being able to, for me personally, surrender to the heart and to feel my feelings and to be in my truth and acknowledge when I'm not in my feelings or not in my truth. Right. And, you know, uh, it's a constant uh, ongoing process of a de softening, opening and deepening is the way my guides put it. And, and because men and women are so um, different emotionally in, in general terms, yeah, in terms yeah. of their orientation, the guy, we're, we're more in our mind and in our bodies in some ways and more attached to those focuses. And women are more in their emotions and their spirits and more attached to those focuses. So for the man to make the journey into the heart and into the spirit is really a process of surrender, you know, and a lot of releasing of, um, you know, being too tough, being too strong, being too uh, in our heads, this kind of an energy. And um, men can help each other to learn how to do that, I guess is the point here. Right. Just hold that space of, uh, especially older men for younger men, mm. older men of wisdom and of character, to hold that space for younger men to be able to feel safe, loved and supported so that they're not at, at struggle inside of themselves about their feelings and their truth. But it is a, it is a definite journey for each person. Yeah, I, I think it's also what you're saying about holding that space. So as a father to a child, you right. know what it, so what because i'm not a man right so what yeah. what what would you, if if you had it i don't know if you have children but if you had a young boy and you were talking to him and he was saying to you know you all the sort of cliche things you hear of everyone says be a man and that you have to be right. tough and you're not allowed you know how does that I, i'll just say this in the netherlands i don't see that as much men do cry yeah. men do embrace men yeah. do experience emotion though yeah. i can imagine still you know that that there is still that thing but for yeah. the guys that for the men in the u.s especially i think or it may be in the sort of middle east and things like that there yeah. is this sort of sure. macho that needs right. to that's encouraged so what would you say yeah no that's that is that's really the point i'm glad to hear that about uh you know uh where you're at my friend that, that there's more openness and tolerance um, so what, what the indigenous cultures do, of course, is they initiate a boy into becoming a man and yeah. basically they take them somewhere in nature and they leave them, you know, overnight or for up on the mountain or deep in the hole or in the cave or somewhere where they get to confront their fears and, and face and, uh, express their own feelings around limitation and separation and all of this. So there, there kind of needs to be this cultural support, you know, either one-on-one -on -one or in the, in the, in the group uh, where the older man is saying, I, I know you're making this journey from uh, pretending to be something to actually learning how to be something. And the way for me to help you to do that is by supporting you to face your fears. This has been the quote from my guides recently. Okay. Face, face your fears, feel your feelings and find your faith. And, and un unless we have that emotional authenticity inside of us, then we're, we're just kind of giving a performance and living from our heads. Does that make sense? Yeah, so the guide to really, to getting inside is to be authentic and to, yes. be, and to let go of those things, those expectations. Yeah. Yes, and to be willing to cry and to be willing to hug and, and be hugged and to be willing to um, be vulnerable really is the point of it, you know? I mean, as an actor, the hallmark of a good actor is that vulnerability. That's and right. That ability yeah. to like, you know, really go to those dark places and those, so, and I understand that because I was an actor as well. So right. I understand sure. those, you know, <laughs> we have such a similar life. Yes. But, but uh, you know, and, and there's, I think there's a reason why people who are like in theater and music and stuff are really drawn to spirituality because it is all about that sure. sort of confrontation. Yeah. Um, but, even though that has been sort of, you know, to be a good actor, you have to be able to go into that and face those things. But is it, has it been a struggle for you as well? Do you, do you find it or do you find that you notice that other people didn't have the ability to do it? Do you know what no, I mean? It's, it's a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> it's a struggle. Um, I mean, I'm part of why I've lived in Ireland for a decade is my, uh, my housemate is also a, a mentor and a friend to me. And mm -hmm. he does what's called a family constellation therapy. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with that? I am not. <laughs> well, I mean, just in a, in a brief nutshell, it's basically, um, it's actually uh, from a, uh, a, a German, uh, Bert Hellinger is the, 
is the man's name. And he was a, a priest at one point and a therapist. And he went to Africa, again, the indigenous connection here. And he saw how the Africans, uh, Zulu, or uh, I don't remember the tribe, but it was, it was deep uh, tribal culture, how they dealt with uh, the shadow in their culture and how they dealt with emotional healing and, and these kinds of things. So what it is, it, coming back to theater, it's kind of like a psychodrama and channeling uh, put together. Mm. So if I have an issue with my father, uh, then we take somebody from the circle to, to represent my father. Right. And I say, this is what I know and understand. And then we put them there and we let them go. And we see what comes through them energetically and emotionally mm. and move with them and, and somebody else towards creating some healing. Mm. And what happens is very much like channeling, Karen, the spirit immediately shows up and the energy is very authentic and, and to the point, to, completely to the point. Right. And there's there's healing that happens. So I've actually done 33 of these one-day workshops. Wow, 33? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just, you're saying this and it's, it's like a little confirmation of stuff that I'm looking at now that in, that in the yoga practice, in, in Pantajali Sutras, and then also in the yoga practice, they talk about the generational healing that needs to take place in order to sort of free you to pursue your own liberation. Right, right, right. And, and that the importance of that, because truly your parents, your mother and father are really your first gurus. You know, they're the, your first example of Shiva and Shakti or male and feminine energy. Right. And depending on, you know, how much of a master, uh, they have been that that's what they pass on but also too you know depending on how far they've gotten in their spiritual path it sort of does come down to you mm -hmm. in a way to not only heal yourself but it also is healing for them that's right absolutely yeah. we we yeah. of course you know you know as well as anyone else here uh we take on our parents shadow yeah and and we're, we're wide open and we're emotionally uh vulnerable and dependent as the child on our parents and so then whatever we have not been able to uh feel safe enough strong enough and free enough mm -hmm. to emotionally express and release then right. that goes straight into our unconscious and into our bodies and we carry that as part of the energy of who we think we are yeah and, right and then in our awakening either through liberation or crisis whatever you know the easier the hard way however we choose to uh, to to rise to uh, to life and meet it, um, you know, we start to become conscious of what's in the in our shadow and what we've taken on from our parents, and start to be able to release what we don't want to carry any longer. And mm -hmm. like we're saying here, uh, you know, my guides have taught me. So a a anger is the transformative energy for women. Grief is the transformative emotional energy for men. Women are allowed to be sad but can't be angry. Men are allowed to be angry and can't be sad. So whatever we have shame around, that mm -hmm. the part of our emotional wholeness, to come back to authenticity, that we're um, uh, disconnected from. Right. So, so do, you, do you recommend then, and I, I, I talk about it sometimes, but uh, it's, it's active for me at the moment, it's, it's just about healing relationships. I will say that in my family, our relationships are good. Um, yeah. we, we went through our healings and things like that, but there's a lot of people who say, oh, I can't talk to my mother. Or I don't like her. Or I don't, right. you know, I don't want to, or I don't like my father. And, and, and so what do you say to the people that are not sort of there yet as far as ben mending those relationships and maybe about the importance of doing it and for the very reasons that you were just saying? Sure. Sure. Well, I mean, of course, the, the grounding of all of this is to understand that we're spiritual beings having a human experience. Right. And like you said, uh, mother and father are, are God figures from infancy and childhood. And if we don't replace that with um, a more loving and more uh, unconditional uh, connection to, to spirit and, and to healing, then we stay trapped in that and we stay trapped in, in the illusions of the world. But when you make that journey within and you start to listen to trust and follow your own loving inner guidance, then you do find um, the safety, strength and freedom to express and release 
uh, all the denied emotion. And when you do that, then you come back to yourself. Right. And, and people always say, and I'm sure you've heard this in, in your work as well, people say, I never knew I was holding on to all of that. It's like, no, that's what denial is. Yeah. You don't know how much you are controlling or uh, resisting what is there. And but, but we can see that for each other, thankfully, and spirit can help us to see that in ourselves. So spirit to me is an essential part of emotional healing in relationships these days. It's, um, Christine asks, is, should ask the question, I think, Christine, you should ask it, but I, I think it's relevant. The one thing I wanted to point out, Christine, is that when he's talking about doing his shadow healing, the person that was representing his father was not his father. And it doesn't necessarily have to be person to person. It can be done on a spiritual level. It can be done on a non-person to person level. But Christine, ask your question, Miss Christine. <laughs> okay. Um, mine is, um, I've grown up with an abusive brother. Okay. And the, um, I don't see any point in um, right. continuing relationship with him because he's gone his way and I'm perfectly fine going my way. But um, I have made peace with my parents. In fact, I speak to them often. Um, they're both dead, but you know, I still speak to them and I, I yeah. thank them for what they've taught me and what I have. Right. Um, though I still have some problems with some things. But um, yes. for me, <laughs> um, on the spiritual level, I do say prayers to my brother every now and then and so on and so forth. I just don't, he's too toxic. So I don't really want a physical. Right. I'm not saying you should have a physical relationship with someone who's abusive. Um, you know, it sounds like you're very conscious about uh, boundaries and, uh, you know, the power of forgiveness, which is freeing ourselves from from what we created or allowed uh, that that we no longer want to be a part of what mm -hmm. honestly if you and i were working in a session my friend i would talk to you about anger and giving yourself more permission to release because what's beneath the anger for for women in general is hurt and and that feeling of i can't release that hurt uh feeling rejected or abused or betrayed all of those energies uh, and that is kind of corrosive to our self-worth. And I've seen it over and over again. You seem to be very receptive to the subject. So I'll just keep going here for a second. Uh, you know, that women, when they have their voice and they can express their anger and release that hurt, then suddenly they start to find their strength and their power at a whole deeper level. And then you can say no without feeling guilty, you see. Have healthy boundaries. My um, greatest fear, um, because I do work um, with um, trying to forgive him or let it go or something, but every once in a while to test myself, I say, if he appears at my front door, would I ask him to come in? And the thing is, no. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, see, bless you. You're, you're, a, kind, you're a kind and caring person, Christy. But you see, the thing is, who you're missing on forgiving here are three guesses. Uh, forgiving me for being, I don't know. Regina. Yes, yes. See, see, forgiveness is not about, yeah. uh, forgiveness, yes, you're getting it. You're getting it. You're, you're picking up my hand here. Thank you. Forgiveness for yourself, my friend. For which, which, yes, which, which says, you know, uh, of course, I didn't ask for this. I didn't expect this. I didn't want this. But somehow, for some reason, I've invited it or allowed it, and I do want to come to peace about it. So I'm going to forgive myself and say, I got it. I'm done with it. I let it go. Then you don't have to keep testing yourself or wondering uh, about your right to have healthy boundaries. Oh, oh, I got it. Thank you. There's a difference between healthy boundaries and, okay, I got it. Go ahead, finish, finish the thought. You're, you're, you're. You know, it's really funny. I could feel it, but, um, and I'm a writer. Okay. But uh, for me to put it into words, um, I still have to work on um, how to put it into words. But I got the idea about boundaries doesn't mean, setting boundaries doesn't mean that you have to open your door and welcome people exactly. in. That's right. That's not a boundary. That's, that's a, um, holding yourself hostage. And yeah. have to prove your kindness, politeness, 
femininity, whatever, uh, over and over again. No, a boundary says I can say no and say, uh, you know, I, I don't choose to have you in my life and have a nice day. I like you saying holding myself hostage. That's that's really what it is. Thank you. I'm glad that helps. And see, the thing is, so so do this for me, if you would, please. Okay. Write out when you when you feel ready to do it, Christine. Write out the feelings of hurt you see that you're still resentful or angry or upset about, and then uh -huh. see, see if you can't give yourself your voice around that. I, you know, brother, I give this back to you. You know, I take, uh, you know, I give you back your your stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, uh -huh. Mom and Dad, where were you when this was happening? I, I give that back to you, etc. You know, just to to let go of where you see this is what happens my friend you're you're doing great um w w women were you know karen was asking about the difference between men and women women get enmeshed energetically emotionally very deeply with you know women are great in the mother love and feminine and unconditional blending and you know getting nice and warm and fuzzy with all of us wonderful we love it but you see, <laughs> well no, okay, but you see, no matter no matter who it is, uh, you you as a spiritual adult, and to heal yourself, you must feel safe, loved, and supported, and that's what boundaries give you the space to do. You see, yeah. Okay, so if you can release the hurt and the anger that w covered over the hurt, then you'll be much more in your body, and you'll be much more in your power, and you'll be much more willing and able to say yes. I trust you, I like you. No, I don't trust you, I don't like you. Without, yeah. without, without being guilty about it, just yes or no, boom. Okay? Yep. Thank you. Cool. Charming. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure, cheers. M Michelle, do you have a question? Go ahead. So, speaking of enmeshment. Yes. Codependency. Yes, you. <laughs> Potato. I have, a, I have a whole lifetime full of that. And yeah. I still, even though I'm very good at setting boundaries, and I, at least I have a very good understanding of what codependency, love addiction, enmeshment, how all that works. Um, and I can see it happening when I'm doing it. Right. And sometimes I'm better at um, creating boundaries than others. <laughs> yes, I hear you deeply, yes. <laughs> um, I actually had a discussion with uh, someone who was very, very psychic and she was looking into, or she was trying to feel my energy field and she, mine was so enmeshed with my daughter's, like um, we'd both do healing work for each other. Yeah. Um, she <laughs> looked at me and she said, well, first I couldn't separate your energy from her energy. And I've never heard I mean, I've heard of people, you know, having cords and attachments and, you know, a lot of, I don't know, parasitic kind of energy, you know, in your field, but, or in one's field. But when she finally separated it out, she asked me a question and I'm not sure how I felt. I felt actually pretty angry <laughs> when she, she said, she said, why are you letting someone that close to you work on you? Okay. And I was like, well, because, I mean, she's cool and I love her and she's good. <laughs> I mean, I've done a lot of work for her also. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, anyway, I don't know if it's a, I don't know if you have an opinion on whether that's healthy or really unhealthy, but she seemed to think it was very unhealthy. Well, you know, uh, no, I, I don't have a yes or no answer for you. But um, what I want to say is just like Christine, Michelle, you know, clearly you're very in your heart and you have a, a lot of love and a lot of compassion, you know, and and that those are those are wonderful things. That's great strength. What I heard you say a minute ago is that you, you still see yourself sometimes giving your power away. Oh, yeah. All right. That's <laughs> That's not, that's not, my that's the problem. My energy, that's my car, my money. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, I mean, sweetheart, we can laugh about it or we can cry and scream, you know. Yeah. One, one will probably help more than the others, you see. 
Yeah. And and see, your bless you. Her comments. I, I'm not attached to her comment. That's mm -hmm. her. But the thing is, like, it's great that you're showing up here and you're expressing all this and sharing this. Thank you. You know, as soon as we don't feel good, that's the sign that we're giving our power away. Mm -hmm. So you can say no to me or to her or to anyone. Uh, mm -hmm. That's that's your right as a human being. And no one else can tell you it's right or wrong is really the truth of it, from mm -hmm. my point of view. You, you know when you feel safe, heard, respected, cared for, and when you don't, see. Yeah. And it, from the, the phrase from my guides recently, Michelle, is they say, we don't talk ourselves into the truth, we talk ourselves out of the truth. We right. know the truth immediately when we feel it, if we're working on ourselves, trusting ourselves in our hearts, as Karen and I were saying, all of that. But we talk ourselves out of the truth, you see. No, it's accurate. I mean, I still to this day i'm kind of angry with myself i have a threat of anger because i know kind of like i'm in this i'm helping a friend out who's ill yes and and i keep trying to get him on his own where he's his own help but i'm like the only person that he knows that can help and i can't seem to just walk away like i would literally have to pack up a truck and leave well, <laughs> and not say a word just so i could feel safe doing that which yeah, yeah, explains the depth of how enmeshed i am in this relationship right well yes thank you that was very honest uh you know um, um i'm sure karen would have uh, some good things to say here as well but let me just finish <laughs> this uh my friend see that's part of why he, he's ill is he refuses to take responsibility for his life and you're really not helping him. Yeah, I mean. All right, well, just slow down. That's important, what I just said. No, I agree. Okay. I just All had right. a conversation and I said, here, look up this movie, here's sound healing, try anything, try all the things, try anything but whining about it, okay? <laughs> well, yeah, so sweetheart, why are you not allowed to say no to this person is the question. You're not I angry at yourself, you're angry at him. Am I? Yes, I I'll tell you. You're angry at him because he won't take responsibility for his life. Uh, I'm pretty angry at me for keep giving in. Yeah, but that's that's your cop out. You see, you can you you can be angry with yourself, but it won't change anything. No, it's true. Thank you. You let me get away with that. You're very kind. So, Michelle, my friend, be angry with him and say, "This is my boundary. This is what I will and will not do." And there you go. It's your it's your life. You get to you get to figure out what to do with it. Have a nice day. All right. Well, I already, I already know that was true like six months ago. Congratulations. <laughs> I just true. haven't done it yet. <laughs> well, yeah. All right, but see, sweetheart, this is why you let yourself get enmeshed and codependent and frustrated, and you're never good enough, and you never help enough, and blah blah blah. You know, this is what I was saying to Christine. It's not about forgiving other people. It's about forgiving ourselves, And it's not about beating up on ourselves. It's about having healthy boundaries with other people. I will do this. I won't do that. I can do this. I cannot do that. I give you your life, your power, your, your choice. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, I already know that. So thanks for reiterating it. But I do need to hear it because when I, I'm making myself sick, I think. Well, baby, you are allowed to be angry. You are allowed to say, hey, grow up. You know, you're not taking any responsibility and I'm, I, can't do, I cannot do this for you. You see, that's a great gift. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Be, kind, be kind to yourself and healthy with your boundaries. Yeah, Karen. Right. I, how did you know? <laughs> I, well, I, I just would only say that in the anger bit, I think part of the re I think I think maybe Michelle for you to maybe understand why you're angry at this person one they're not taking responsibility for their life which is something that they could actually do mm -hmm. and then the other thing it's not because they're not incapable it's because they're choosing not to and the other thing is is that you're mourning the person that you know that he could be and that you're hoping will show themselves to you and you're sure. sort of mourning that person and this this decision to keep helping and keep helping and keep helping is just that hope beyond hope 
that you can have the things with this person that you've wanted, that you see the potential of, that if he was just clear for five minutes of a day, you, you see the, potenti the potentiality of a relationship that you want with this person. So part of you is holding on to a, a little bit of a, a hope. Fantasy. Actually, well, it's a fantasy and a reality. It's like Schlesinger's cat. It's sometimes true, sometimes not true. And it's only true when, and, and depending on the, the, the moment. And but, it's actually, just not that true. Maybe cries, cries that actually rings like perfectly true. <laughs> So. I think as women, we do it, and we're, maybe we're not doing it with someone that's having mental issues, but we do it with someone who is refusing to sort of give to us, and then some moments when they do give to us, you know, then you, it, it keeps you addicted to that person because you keep thinking, well, if I'm, if I'm better, if I just try a little harder, if I say it in this way, if I jump through this hoop, if I, you know, wear my hair up, or, you know, you know what I mean? If I get them on a good day, if I, if I, I could just get them to meditate for three minutes. Yeah. But if, <laughs> if, if, if one Let moment, me. go ahead, Luke, because right. I'm done with Bless that. You. Yeah. You're both suffering from the same gorgeous illusion, which is that. It's I'm not having this illusion right now. Just oh, to all, right. all right. You're fine. Yeah. The, the, so you fall in love with a man's potential or a relationship's potential rather than what it is in the moment. And you see, this is where we give our power away once again, right? So here's a couple quotes from my guides. They say, no one can take your power from you. You can only give it away. And no one will give you your freedom. You must take it because it's yours. And so the other thing is there's two kinds of relationships in the world. One is there are conscious relationships where we each take responsibility for our part of the relationship we make clear agreements and we apologize and make amends when we have to ch change our agreements and we get new agreements. The other kind, that's, that's so rare, of course, that's what we're all reaching for, myself included. The other kind is the hidden agenda, which is seduction and manipulation, which my friends, you cannot get there from here. You cannot come from a place of separation and manifest wholeness. This is the problem. Okay, that's my two cents on that. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you both. You deserve better, both of you. Yeah. And well, I'm, I'm, I'm Sanyas. I'm, I'm not looking for that. So anyway, but I, I know from my past, I've been there. Anyway, um, yeah. So I just, I don't know why, but I thought that was a good road to go down. Sure. So are you, are you, does, I don't know if anyone else has any questions in the chat. I know some people are anxious for you to start channeling. So I'm going to ask you if you would be willing to go ahead and. Of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. Yes. The, the, the last thing uh, just about here about relationships is sure. we need to be willing to give to ourselves yeah. what, we're, what we're wanting life to give to us. We need to demonstrate to the people in our life, this is how you treat us. This is what love and respect looks like as far as I'm concerned. And if we don't do that, then of course we, we get what we don't want. Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying I've mastered it. I'm saying that's the goal. Yeah. That's the idea. That's the idea. We'll have another webinar about that. <laughs> yes, I look forward to it. Yes, women in their power. I'm all for it. Believe me. I well, I th it's not just women, but I I think that you have a very good um, understanding because I think one of the first things that I ever I think I asked I was asking you one time for permission to say no to something. Right. You know, and I'm, you, I'm a big believer in saying no, as you can hear. I've learned. I'm doing better. Yeah. You're doing great. I'm happy to hear that. I'm glad that that's <laughs> truly. I'm glad that that was helpful. Um, yeah. Yeah. As I said, the the revelations. I'll, I'll I'll jump into channel here in one second. The revelations were for me recently. Face your fears, feel your feelings, and find your faith. And to feel our feelings, we need to be safe enough, strong enough, and free enough. Okay. So hopefully, that's what we're creating here. Is that permission? In, in, in all of us to, to, to go the next step on that path. And then the, the, uh, the giving and receiving of love has to begin with ourselves. Then other people will understand what self-love and giving and receiving love feels like for us, and that we'll be able to match each other vibrationally. Right. All right. All okay, right. awesome. Thank you. Okay, here I go, getting out of the way. So okay, thank do you, you need any water to take a break before we get going? Are you good to go? 
I'm good to go. Awesome. That's I was born for this. Thank you. <laughs> ready. Okay. I was born ready. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So right. I'll do what I did before. If you'd like, you can close your eyes, take a deep breath. Okay. Right. And here comes seven stars once again. God bless you, dear friends. Yeah. What a great conversation. Uh, everything's getting all stirred up here. We love it. Yeah. We love a, a good debate. Yeah. Dear friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm get to examine it and uh, find what feels true for you. Dear friends, the heart knows, knows what the mind struggles to believe. And you are that heart. And that mind is in service to that heart. And dear friends, that heart is the doorway back into the fullness, the wholeness, and the oneness of your higher self, soul, and spirit. As we said earlier, this is a powerful time, dear friends, when your spirit, when your alignment to your experience perception and openness, receptivity, willingness to feel and to express all your feelings is going to help you to really shine your light and share your love. God bless you, dear friends. We love you so much. Karen, here we go. Yeah? Okay, perfect. Does anyone have a question? If you do, please put it in the chat. Just put a yes in there and then we'll get going. Um, as, as, as you were you were talking with the seven stars, is that you? Is that your... That's our vib that's a representation of our vibration here, dear friend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's our symbol, if you like. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Yeah. So, so are are you are you, is that a, is that that's just a symbol? Is it a location as well, or is it no, more of just a symbol? symbol? Yeah, dear friend. For the moment, let's say it's just a symbol. How do you like that? Okay. Perfect. More okay. To my, more to come, Karen. You're you're always on the case. God bless. You. <laughs> okay. God bless you. Michelle, you have a question. Go ahead. No, I don't actually. Yeah, I thought he was going to get started with the, maybe a message first. I was just writing, yeah, because I really, really like to like say, yeah. <laughs> All right. Michelle does not have a question. Christine does have a question. Go ahead, Christine. Greetings and blessings again. Um, I'm reading, um, rereading a book called Earthing. Yeah. And um, one yeah. of the things that it points out is that um, inflammation is one of the things when um, that our bodies pick up when we don't have enough uh, connection with earth, um, skin to earth. Yeah. So um, what I started um, yesterday was, again, getting back into um, spending at least 30 minutes um, with my bare feet on the ground. Wonderful. Um, because my hands uh, are getting um, arthritis pretty bad. Can you see this as helping with the arthritis, the yeah, swelling? Yeah, dear friend, absolutely. And look to your the minerals that you're putting in your body, dear friend. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, the earth is the great balancer. You're on your way, Christine, to health and happiness. Yeah. Um, the earth is the great balancer. And uh, she has, uh, of course, all the um, elements and all the energies that help uh, all of her creatures keep coming into health and balance. And as you said, dear friend, you're, you're the writer, Christine. So, of course, a lot of energy is going in that direction with your hands. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, dear friend, put your hands on the earth, too. Why not? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. How simple is that, we think, over here? Yeah, dear friend. Yeah. Yeah. You see, yeah. I use when I'm doing my yard work, but now That's good. after I pick up the dog poop, I'll right. go wandering right. around. You've got a lot of good work. you've got a lot of good projects, dear friend. God bless you. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. Thank so you. you're welcome. So yeah, dear friend, the message is here. Put your hands in the earth and give your love to Mother Earth, dear friend. Yes, I do. Through your wonderful. Through your hands, uh, you know, uh, 30 seconds a minute. So, dear friend, you can know that your hands are a channel for love for you. And love is the great healer, dear friend. So that will, that will help your, uh, your energy balance as well. Oh, that's good. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome, dear friend. The earth is a heart. The earth is in your heart. When you go to sleep at night, you could put, if you like, uh, your hands to your heart and say, thank you, Mother Earth, for my healthy body and my, and, and my healthy world. How do you like that? I like it. Thank you. you. You're welcome, dear friend. Keep up the good work. You're doing great. Thank you. Yes, indeed. 
Um, there's some questions from a few of the um, people in the chat, and they, because we are, uh, we deal with a, diff a lot of different channeling, and we we talk to a lot of different channelers. You know, one stop shopping here, uh, yeah, <laughs> everything is available. Um, there's some questions. Uh, why don't you, Michelle? Why don't you ask the questions and and sort of, and and touch them, or Dave, whoever wants to ask them. But why don't you go ahead and ask the questions, Michelle or Dave? Which one? Okay. Go ahead. Dave, if you want to chime in. Or yeah, Leela, chime in too. Any of you. Why don't you two guys take over? Dave, why don't you go? Hello, Seven Stars. How are you? We're good, dear friend. Yeah, spirit, if you like, Dave. Keep it simple, yeah? Spirit, okay. Yeah, so dear, God bless you. How are you is the question. I'm very good. Okay, I'm then. Very are you an incarnated being or are you... The higher self of the channel here and a few extra fr friends dropping in. For a, for a nice chat, a visit, yeah? Okay, the higher self. So you're like his godhead, you would say. Sounds good. We'll go with that. Okay. Yeah. Usually when we are talking to people that are channeling, we just like to know who we're talking to and kind of what their polarity is and stuff like that. So. Right, dear friend, it's all about love for us over here and being of good service to humanity to help you to listen to, trust, and follow your loving inner guidance, to know that you're safe, loved, and supported, and all is truly well for you, Dave. Okay, thanks very much. You're welcome, we hope that's helpful. Are you from the angelic realm? Are you Pleiadian, Arcturian? Yeah. Yeah, it's like the, whole, it's the, whole, the whole neighborhood is on call, yeah? I, I don't know what that means. Well, dear friends, uh, yeah, there is, uh, you're in the illusion of separation, yeah, where everyone's in tribes and clubs and planets and stars and all that. We're not so attached to any of that, you understand. We're just available, yeah. We're just, uh, yeah, coming here in love and light, dear friends, yeah. So it isn't so much, dear friends, that you believe in us, yeah, that's very kind of you to understand who we are. But we want you to help you to believe in yourselves, dear friends, to be kind and caring and loving and compassionate so that life is not a challenge any longer, but a joyous experience. So that's our focus here with you right here and now today. We hope that's helpful. Thank you. You're welcome, dear friend. Thank you. I have a question, Seven Star. Yeah. How, is, how is about the attachment, your attachment to the Irish uh, Guinness, that is a beer. Yeah, did, you get, did you get attached to the Irish nature drinking healthy beer? Right, dear friend. No, the channel here has been sober for 32 years. Ooh, are you jumping to some other people to get the taste or no? No, dear friend, we're not uh, needing the, the taste of all of that, you see, because we're oh. the self. You see, the taste that you're describing, um, yeah, sex, drugs, rock and roll, your mm -hmm. friend, those are reminders of who you are, and we are the essence of that, you see. Did you ever incarnate in the Ireland? No, dear friend, we're not... Uh, ever, you know, before, before, I'm not saying now. Did you ever had a human incarnation in Ireland? Right, so dear friend, we're not a personality, we're not an identity outside of love and light, and we say the higher self, the soul and spirit, and guides, guardians, teachers, and friends who are here right. to support humanity and help you at this time of awakening. Yeah, I understand. So the higher self never incarnates in any form, lower form. The higher self creates the lower forms, dear friend. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then knows that in one lifetime you will come back to yourself and you will merge with and become that higher self once again. Mm -hmm. So can you explain the... Uh, the meaning of having one higher self and many higher selves. One person can have many higher selves and no. other can have a one. No, dear friend, there's one higher self for each person. One is more than sufficient. Well, I heard different story. That's why I'm asking. Excellent. We understand, dear friend. We're just uh -huh. yeah. So there isn't, uh, dear lady, there isn't a right or wrong about reality. Mm -hmm. Everyone creates what they believe is true is possible is real you see so we're having a great conversation here about who we are where we come from how this works how that works wonderful there isn't one reality 
there is a reality for each person's belief system in alignment to your free will. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the higher, uh, the highest ra rank, rank for angels? We couldn't tell you, dear friend. That's not our. That's not our purview. Yeah. So, what is you? What is you subjects? What you are the most uh, interested in to talk to? Love, dear friends, and healing, and awakening, and growth. Okay, so uh, can I ask you about my healing energy? How is progressing at this point, dear friend? How do you feel it's progressing at this point? Yeah, well, you, you heard sure. on. Say again. I can also make a philosophy, and here is the answer. As you said before, we have all different opinions. Yes, I do have an opinion. So yes, we are in human form, and we do have the ego, and I can maybe think I am this, but I am not. I am in third dimension, right? But not always connected to my fifth and sixth and higher. So maybe my perception who I am and what is my healing is not accurate, my friend. Your friend and maybe that's why I am asking you because right. I come from 3D, so right. I can do philosophy all day long, my Be friend. Do do that. Do philosophy all day long, dear friend. Be our guest because that's what life is: is you believing something, expecting it, and experiencing it. When you allow, so you're asking us how healing are you? How high is your healing vibration? What level are you at, dear friend? We think you are a better expert about that than we are. Understand? Okay, if, if you that's a good that, answer. Thank that's you a good very answer. much, dear friend. It isn't philosophy; it's reality. There is of a course. difference. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, dear friend. God bless you. We're having a great discussion about reality here today, dear. Yeah. I, I think that. Because because I don't know if if you all are aware, but my my uh, the beings I channel are also my higher self, and they are very much in line with with your experience of your higher self. Exactly. And the, in within that, there is no time Static. space. Right. There's no judgment about where things are. It's only about bringing forth the the knowledge of our true divine nature. And exactly. so the need to quantify to uh, levels as to how advanced someone needs to be or wants to be or what they think, you know, I would just say this to Leela, the fact that you are so dedicated to healing that can never not be beneficial to humanity. Um, the judgment you put on yourself is your only limitation and that the, the, the questioning that you have of your own ability is not trusting your own intent. And Nothing. your intent will always be honored. So uh, thank you so much for that, for doing the healing. And, you know, I think you, everybody you is, the, because you asked this question, you asked this question of Jim all the time. And I know that you're looking for progression, but I would just say to you the, the fact that you have the intention is is the most beautiful part and and uh, so keep doing it you know well, uh, why i ask at this time because i heard i got attachments from a healer who told me that i got attachments and so i wanted to conform if he can feel the negative attachments what i feel they are not here there so I wanted to confirmation in, in my energy field is something negative. So that was the idea. Okay. Well, that wasn't so, clear in your question, but thank you for clarifying it. Maybe yeah. can, can you guys uh, uh, answer the question? Yeah. That question? Thank you for the help here. God bless you. Yeah. So uh, Leela, is it? Yes. Yeah. So here we, Karen, you've got it to absolutely zero it in. Leela, it is about trusting your truth. Dear friend, not proving to yourself what is true or untrue, you see. And so everyone can give you a feedback, an opinion, an attachment, a criticism, a doubt, uh, all of that. But dear friend, none of that has anything to do with the truth of your healing energy or which uh, dimension you're operating from. The ego focuses on drama, on doubt, on limitation, on criticism, on judgment. So, dear friend, we're not interested in uh, sustaining any of that or helping you to sustain any of that, God bless you. We want you, as was said here, to trust your inner guidance, dear friend. And to 
If someone tells you something, trust if it's true or not. Ask yourself, do I really believe this? Does this support the truth as I've perceived it so far, dear friend? We don't see any lack or limitation in your ability to heal or to trust your healing abilities at all, dear friend. The, as you allow yourself to flow with what feels true for you, feels good for you, Leela, what feels exciting, empowering, then, dear friend, you become a powerful healer in every moment. How do you like that? Yes, I am not, I am not a patient about the healing work. I am hearing an echo. Yes, dear friend, we're all hearing an echo. God bless you. Uh, yeah, it's it's okay. not. Yeah, dear friend, the word we would choose is dedication, not ambition. Yeah. Uh, at this point in time, I am uh, I am well informed uh, through uh, Ganesha and other people who I work. I'm well informed when I'm standing. I was more interested in the healing energy and what's mine energy how if it's something negative on if it's how the energy generally because m my healing energy is me so if you have access to my energy so i want to just have an update how is my energy how are you Your friend, so that's, you? What, that's what it is that's yeah, more i don't really need any uh, a score because i know already i already all i'm well informed Your friend it's not energy is not information energy is a uh, vibration right and you can better feel than i thank you see from my dimension i cannot feel i can only think that you are maybe not who you are i can maybe think but truly i cannot prove i can instinctively maybe think that you are fake yeah but do i have a proof no i don't right but you if you are real even if you are fake, but you are on the other side, you can better access my energy. And that's my point. Dear friend, you're giving us more credit than we deserve. You can access your energy as often and as deeply as you allow yourself to trust it. It's not about proving it. It's about trusting it. They're two different things. Hmm. Yeah. Well, then we are gods after all, right? Dear friend, in, in, in awakening, you're not always conscious or trusting or loving or uh, safe. Uh, that's the perception. Yeah. So don't give us more credit than we deserve, dear friend. Fake or unreal or true, dear friend, we're just a reflection of what you believe is possible in this moment. But when you are higher self, you are in the highest form of existence. Are you not? Dear friend, there is, is there a highest form of existence? We don't think so. All right. Then. Okay, Michelle is frustrated already. So let's 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 Michelle talk a little bit. Oh, good. We can frustrate Michelle now. God yep. Bless. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I just want an answer to the question for her. That's all. <laughs> what, what is the question? The question is 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 just an evaluation of you know where she she wants to be because she believes and though i agree with you that she can act that she can have a good perception of who she is as a healer um i that is a judgment that she has about yes. herself yes and, and so the, the 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 job for her is to uh, learn to let that go and to trust her own knowing if you can trust your intuition to heal if you can trust yourself to have that then it shouldn't really so much be about getting the confirmation that it's working. You have to trust because things things are generational. Things go through time and space. It's very impossible to track every drop of water that hits the puddle. But I'll just say this, you know, um, when you, when you, n never mind. I'm going to let it go. Go ahead. The ego. The ego. <laughs> Dear friends, yeah, you can hear us. The ego demands proof. Yeah. Your higher self is is the thing itself. It doesn't need any proof. Right. It's not about status. It's not about levels. It's not about being real or fake. It's trusting your perceptions yeah. or not. And yeah. we are doing everything in our power right here and now to help you to feel that, to yeah. surrender to that, and to let go of the resistance. The other thing I'll just say that about attachments, and this is just an aside about attachments because I do know something about them. Attachments come and go, and they have everything to do with your vibrational level in the moment. So very much so, 
depending, they're, they're not permanent. Sometimes they're harder to let go than other things, but attachments can manifest in many different ways. They can be blocks in your emotional field, or they can be actually thought forms or entities that attach to your, uh, your vibration. But depending on where you are, depending on how you clear your energy, I can imagine that before you do a healing, you ask for the highest good. That's always going to be honored. I can imagine that you ground yourself. That's always going to be honored. I can imagine that you ask for protection. That's always going to be honored. So those attachments can come and go, and they have very much to do with anger, resentment, hatred, fear, and all of the other negative emotions that are open us up to vibration because where attention goes, energy flows. Like attracts like. If you're living in a, in a moment of fear, then more fear is going to join it. So the only thing that you can do if you believe you have an attachment, and, and you shouldn't even believe it to be, first of all, not even believing it and knowing that you're love and light will let that attention go, will let that attachment go. But if, you're, but if you're convinced that you have it because something that somebody else told you, which again is not really a preface for having a belief because someone else told you something about you, then contact your beings of love and light. Ganesha is the great obstacle remover. There is no better being out there within the universe to remove any kind of attachment or block. Right. So uh, you, you should, so then exactly well said, Karen, and then you come back to peace, dear friends. And peace is where all healing happens. And there is no proving it. There is no disproving it. It is a state of being. So whoever, whatever, however, you, if you invite yourself back to peace, let's go of the struggle, the doubt, the worry, the judgment, the resistance to prove anything. And let's go after the channeling for drink in Astro. How is that? Dear friends, <laughs> fine, yeah? Oh, you see? I dear got you, I got you. Yeah, dear friend, it's fine. You are safe, loved, and supported by spirit all of the time. The challenge in this work and in this lifetime, is, in this lifetime dear friend, is to remember that, to trust that, and to surrender to that. And we say again, we do all in our power to help you learn to do that. Thank you so much for that. Um, Michelle does have a question. Go ahead, Michelle. Okay. Thank you, so, Stars, would, it, um, would you share with us um, some A, one or more than one good way to really hone in on our own energy fields and clear it of all negative uh, stuff that is, you know, not for our highest good? Yeah. Dear friend, we just said it a moment ago. Thank you, Michelle. Now we're getting somewhere. It, dear one, it is peace. When you come back to peace, you come back to yourself. The ego lives for drama, as we just experienced here. Compare and compete, attack and defend, all of those lovely uh, ideas, wonderful, necessary, part of the picture. When you come back to peace, you're not proving anything. You're not struggling about anything. Then you can allow from peace, Michelle, love to come into the vibration. Yeah, love and peace go hand in hand. And so love is not going to assert itself upon any situation or circumstance where there isn't first that ability to attain, sustain and maintain peace. Does it make sense? So are you saying that if I feel I'm in meditation and I'm deciding I'm gonna say, put Reiki through my system or whatever, I'm going to yes. do my healing or I'm going to ground, I'm going to clear and balance my chakras. I'm going to, you know, look kind of like just intend that anything that is not for my highest good is out of my field. Yes. Like all I have to do is come to peace Yes. and then love. And yep. it is so. Yes, dear friend, this is what it's all about. That's why it can never be proven or disproven. You see, you are peace. You are love. When you can sustain peace in your heart, in your relationships, in your perceptions, then love and inspiration and healing will find you because that is absolutely your essential nature. The mind struggles to understand what the heart knows. The heart has to feel safe in order to open up. Peace creates that vibration of safety. But do you not agree that even if you have peace and love in your heart, that you can also get attacks from other things? That are right. actually only, if you, only if you allow yourself to give your power away. This is the whole theme here of codependence, God bless you. This is the whole conversation you had before we came in. Uh -huh. 
This is where people uh, are seduced or manipulated to play small, to play weak, to, to seek to control, to seek to uh, judge, to all of those lovely things, God bless you, instead of coming to peace. This works for me or it doesn't. This feels true or it doesn't. This makes sense or it doesn't. Peace is the presence of infinite possibilities, including love. I think that's going to be a little hard for us to understand as a 3D human. How do I get to peace? This kind of peace and this kind of love. Like, I need more practical solutions <laughs> that are like, maybe I lay it out for you. Like, here, Michelle, first we're going to like imagine a beam of light. We're going to bring it through the crown chakra. Then we're going to bring it through the third eye, the throat, the heart, the all the way down through. Friend. Let us interrupt you. Excuse us, Michelle. God bless you, dear friend. The way to come to peace is to forgive yourself for the uh, belief that you cannot be at peace. I'm, I'm unsafe. I'm unqualified. I'm unexperienced. I'm not enough. There isn't enough. I don't know. I don't understand. You need to do it for me. You need to do it through me, dear friends. Mm -hmm. When you forgive and recognize that you are here to learn through your own free will, this is so important, Michelle. We're so glad to talk about this. It really is the heart of the matter. I'm here as a human being to work through my free will, through my choices, through my belief systems. And when I'm aligned to that which is true, I feel good about myself and I come back to peace. When I'm aligned to that which is untrue, I'm in resistance. I'm in judgment. I'm in fear. I forgive myself for my fears, judgments, and resistance. I come back to peace. Then, dear friend, do your guided meditations to help you to know that. Mm -hmm. That is actually very Is helpful. that practical enough, Michelle? Yes, yes that's very helpful. Thank, Thank you. you, dear friend. See, perception and the ego are not the same thing, God bless you, everyone. You have beautiful, loving, kind, caring hearts. You have brilliant minds. That's why you're having a conversation like this with us here today through the channel and all the rest of it. Can we prove who we are, dear friends? It's not our job to prove who we are. It's our job to come through the channel and to express who we are to the best of our ability to be able to help you to feel safe, loved, and supported, to listen to, trust, and follow your own loving inner guidance. When you let go of resistance, judgment, comparison, competition, etc., you come back to peace. Then you can heal, dear friends. Thank you for that. Uh, Dave has a question. Go ahead, Dave. Hi, Lou. Or, sorry, seven stars. You're a friend. We're, we're a spirit here, yeah? You can call us whatever you want. Fred and I <laughs> couldn't care less, Dave, yeah? Okay, so I understand that you are a high vibrational, higher dimensional being with a very broad understanding of how things in the universe work. Um, I was wondering, does uh, the channel have any other beings that it can potentially channel that are more relatable for us since we are lower dimensional than you? from that perspective. Your friends, you're, you're once again, God bless you. We're welcoming you with open arms and everyone here is backing away in horror. God love you, dear friends, yeah? Like you're not good enough. Like you don't understand enough, Dave. Like you're, like uh, you can't possibly relate to what we're saying. I, I yeah. think I think that the reason that these, these questions are coming up and I'll just say like this, because there is a, there's a familiarity that we have um, with different channels where they are channeling, say, beings on a ship or right. uh, other beings throughout history. Right. And, yes. you know, and with all due respect to everyone here, you have at this moment the opportunity to talk to infinite intelligence that can share with you some of the most beautiful truths that you, you could ever imagine. So I would encourage you to think within your heart about what is, what is it I really need to know about my own ascension? And I assume everyone's interested in their ascension. And I assume everyone is interested in growing spiritually and not just having someone basically perform to you at your will, answering questions that are, you know, can be, be asked by anybody who lives on the corner of the street. So, you know, for, with all due respect, I, I would like to shift this away for, from this kind of line of questioning and and just say, you know, ask, what is it that you want to know, Dave? What do you need to know for your life other well, than wanting to speak to a, a being that maybe 
is flying around in a ship over your head, if you don't have any other of those kind of questions, I would just say you probably do. Just, you know, ask some of those questions. Well, with, with respect, I think that uh, it's kind of like a grade 12 student talking to like a grade three student. And it has all these understandings and you have to go through grade four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, 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 in order to get to this level. Well, as from your grade three, what is it that you, you tuned into the webinar today? So did you have any questions? What kind of questions do you have? Propose those questions. I personally don't have any questions. I just wanted to see how Lou was as a channel. And Great. He's having a time of it today, dear friend, we'll tell you. Mm. God bless you. So that's it, actually. I don't really have any questions. OK. Well, I have some questions. Yeah. So, thank you, Dave. Thank huh? you. We'll see you in Star Trek. Yeah, actually, God. Lisa has a question. We'll let her go first. Go thank ahead. Thank you, Stephen Stars. I don't know what you mean by that, but OK. Yeah. Go ahead, Lisa. Hi. Um, can you hear me OK? Yes, dear friend. God bless you. Go ahead. Um, OK, so this is a question about I'd like to know how to deal with um, what's a really human thing, but from a higher perspective. So yeah. if I'm for some reason having a really bad day and I think I hope that everyone knows what this feels like, you know, from it could be for any reason. In my particular case, it's usually to do with dealing with quite difficult health problem but that yeah. can it can be financial problems I mean it could be anything and I can be in that space where I absolutely know that I have access to you know God or higher intelligence or you know I know all that um, intellectually but um, it isn't there I can't feel it or I can't connect with it because I'm too involved in whatever it is whether I'm suffering pain or as I right. say, it could, it could be anything. I mean, somebody might be struggling with financial stuff. In fact, sometimes it's that for me because of that's a kind of knock-on effect of being ill and things. So um, in that moment when you kind of, it's like you're totally closed off from everything and you know it's there, but you can't access it. What, what do you do? <laughs> God bless you. Yeah, Elsa, we've chatted before, dear friend. God bless you. Yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah, well, dear friend, see, we'll, we'll hope that we can, with Karen's help here and uh, the collective wisdom of everyone's open hearts, yeah, continue to move this uh, very exciting, challenging uh, experience here in the right direction, in the best direction for, for you and for everyone. Dear friend, you are love and light. And when you resist that, doubt that, judge that, convince yourself of being otherwise, you suffer. God bless you, Elsa. And that is part of the human experience. When you allow yourself permission to forgive yourself and have compassion for yourself and surrender yourself back into peace and love, then dear friend, you don't have to solve everything, fix everything, conquer everything, or prove anything to anyone else. You see, dear friend, you give yourself permission to come back into that sanctuary in your heart, your heart of hearts, we say, that is love and light and peace. And dear friend, you sit in that vibration, please, for as deeply and as often as you can. And then you change every time because you are a spiritual being having a human experience. You are not the mind, the body, the ego, et cetera, the, the outer world, dear friend. You learn to live from the inside out, which is truly what ascension is all about, everyone. Does it make sense, Elsa? Yes, yeah, it does. And sometimes I have this weird experience with it that if I'm feeling really bad, if I just say something, um, uh, meaning <laughs> I usually say it in quite bad language, so I'm trying to think of some polite way of saying it. Your friend, be our guest. Um, uh, let well, me, why well, should you be different from anyone else today? God bless you. Well, to hell with this might be like a yeah. slightly better way of saying it than... than that, yeah. That's the politest way. Well, and then I actually, so then I don't try to feel any better. I just think, well, I'm just going to feel rubbish because that's how today is. Sometimes I then, um, that flips things over and I don't quite understand why it does. Your friend, you've surrendered your judgment about it. Right. Which is, again, the theme of the day here, God bless you. 
yeah, you are not your pain, your fear, your uh, efforts to alleviate that. You are that which is eternal, unconditional peace and love. And when you can begin to use your pain and fear, as you have done here, dear friend, bless you, courageously, bravely, deeply, often, dear friend, permission to, for you to change your mind about who you are and say, the hell with it, beautiful, a statement of surrender if ever we heard one, God bless you, dear friend, then you've let go of the struggle and you come back to yourself. It is only the struggle, dear friends, to prove something that you doubt is true or you feel powerless against or someone has created as a criticism or a judgment about you and your lack of worth or any other thing, dear friend, that is where the pain and the fear comes from, you see. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a really good way of putting it. Thank you. Very and well. the only, the only other thing, sorry, this is quick. Um, You're fine, dear friend, take your time. This is the most joy we've had in a while here, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, this one, this is, so that, that really helped explain my process. Thank you. So I've got that bit. So the other thing I have is, does it, where I tend to judge myself is, I might have to do that a million times a day. So I kind of, I say to myself, okay, let it go. I'm just going to feel like this. That's fine. And I seem to my vibration raises and I feel a bit better. Then two minutes later, I'm kind of back in a, a flap again, yeah. thinking, you know, this is awful. I'm feeling awful again. And I have to do it again. It's like I have to keep resetting myself. But is it okay that we have to do that? Is that human as well? It's okay by us, Elsa. It's not so much fun for you, God bless you, dear friend, but it's absolutely fine over here, dear lady. Yeah. See, dear friends, pain is resistance. Fear is resistance. Judgment is resistance. Comparing and competing is resistance. Trust is uh, allowing yourself to surrender to that which is your truth. Trust is the truth, dear friends. Yeah. So when you trust the truth, you will always begin to feel better. You will always begin to feel safer. You will always begin to feel stronger. You will always begin to feel clearer, dear friend, you see. So do you understand you, your pain and fear, like everyone else, is not here to punish you or here to prove something to you about your lack of worth or lack of moral fiber or your karma or your sin, dear friends, pish posh, yeah? None of that. It is simply confusion and resistance that's stuck in your mental body. And when you surrender your mind to your heart, God bless you, yeah, well, to hell with that, yeah, and you open your heart to love and peace and forgiveness and compassion, then, dear friends, you set yourselves free. And then whatever you need to know informationally will manifest for you as the next step on your journey. But if you keep staying stuck in the paper bag trying to punch your way out of, I'm not enough, there isn't enough, I can't get it right, I'm doing it wrong, we can't interfere with your free will, dear friends. You hear the difference? Yeah. So basically, whatever. So it's like whatever we feel, however bad it is, as long as we don't judge it and we yes. just kind of observe or your friend, you through it. You see, when you judge it, you resist it. When you resist it, you control it. There's nothing we can do for you when you're controlling your pain and fear. Yes, yeah, control, yeah, it's it's good, yeah. So when the pain and fear comes up, say, hallelujah, here's my resistance. Now I can dance more deeply, more consciously with this unconditional love and perfect peace that is the core of my being. I'm going to give my pain and fear and judgment to you. And dear friend, if you do it for two minutes or 20 minutes or two days, that's your progress, you see. Pain and fear is just old energy, old energy. You speak of attachments, that's a fine metaphor, dear friends, yeah? Or thought forms, yeah? Everything is real through your attention to it, through your emotional focus upon it. This is not okay. This is not acceptable. This does not make sense. Well, then you get more of that, you see. This is helping me. This is guiding me. This is inspiring me. This is helping me to see things differently. Well, then you get more of that, you understand, dear yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, You're welcome. Oh, brilliant. You're Thanks welcome. very much. You're welcome, dear friend. Thank yeah, you. pleasure. Thank yeah, you so trust. much. You're um, welcome. Trust the truth, dear friends, hmm. to set you free. It doesn't have to be our truth. It is your truth. Each person has their own sacred, eternal connection to truth. 
You don't talk yourself into things, you talk yourself out of things, we say. Stop doing that. Trust your truth and see where it leads you. Karen. Um, there's a question from David. Go ahead, David. Hello. Hi there. Yeah, hi, David. We're here. So, um, let's go. Let's dance with David. Bring it on, dear friend. Do your best. Recently, um, I've, I've had a lot of things happen that have affected my my thought process, and I've been want to understand how to make decisions a little better. I have uh, been having trouble because I've been working on finding a place to live since I've moved back to town, and I found somewhere, but I've, if I had something, some kind of feeling like I wasn't sure whether I should move this is to this place because it's like a year lease and I'm just trying to get some help on deciphering what I'm feeling when I'm trying to, one minute I'm like all in to, to move in and then the next minute I'm like really afraid to like make this commitment and be with someone that I, that I don't know at all and to be there for a really long time. God bless you. So, sounds like no fun, David, yeah? Yeah, it's been stressful. Just, you know, I just want to be somewhere where, where I can relax and be at peace and be happy, you know? Right. We hear you. Dear friend, can we answer your question? Please. Yeah. Dear friend, give thanks in advance, like we just were saying uh, here to Elsa. Give thanks for your healing. Give thanks for your divine uh, living situation. Give thanks for life showing you clear signs, David, unambiguous signs. What, what is the best path for me in terms of living in a safe, comfortable, affordable place? Thank you, God. You understand? No. Can you elaborate on that? Well, dear friend, you see, prayer, which is what is everyone's doing all the time, is having chats with the universe in your mind, and you're asking, and you're saying, but this, but that, but this, but that. And we say, okay, we hear you, David. But we want to say prayer begins in humility. Uh, God, I need some place to live, and it ends in gratitude. Thank you for showing me the next step on my journey of living in in my perfect situation, in my best situation. Do you hear the difference? Okay, yes. Right. So, David, work with that, dear friend. Just as we said, we would say here for healing and everything else, manifesting clarity, greater intimacy with spirit, greater understanding about your healing abilities, give thanks and you will save yourself, David, any more confusion or doubt or worry. How do you like that? Yeah, I like that. It works, dear friend. Yeah? And that's good for, like, all decision processes. Everything in the universe, dear friend. What you give thanks for, you will have more of. It is our promise to you. Beautiful. Yeah. Because, you see, dear friend, that's where you open your heart. You say, all right, God, I have a problem. I'm trying to figure it out. There's this, there's that. Yes, yes, yes as we just said to Elsa, but let us help you to open your heart. And when you say, God, I'm going to write out what I want. I'm going to say, these are the qualities. These are my conditions. This is what I'm hoping for. This is what I would love to have. And now I'm going to take the next three days to give thanks every time I think of this situation. You understand, David? Yes. And see what changes, dear friend. The door will open for you where you least expect it. Yes. Yeah, uh, it just seemed good, and I kept feeling this unknown sensation of, of worry that I shouldn't do it and I couldn't pinpoint it. Right. So, dear friend, we say again, what you give thanks for will manifest as your experience with greater clarity and greater uh, greater ease, dear friend. You see, we say again, you, we think you heard this and this is why it inspired you. You don't need to talk yourself into your truth. Your truth will feel right for you and you'll know it, dear friend. Uh, okay, yeah. You got it? Yeah. Good man. Thank you, David. Thank you. Much love. Yeah. God bless you. Well done. Hi. Right. Okay. Yeah. There's a question from the YouTube chat. It's from Firstborn. And um, Firstborn was saying, was asking, do you, do you know what it's like to be human? Do you, do you have that? Do you have the ability to access that kind of information? Right. It's a great question. It's mm -hmm. a very helpful question. We thank you. So, dear friends, you see, the whole process of channeling, Karen, you'll certainly relate to this, and opening to channel, is not that uh, you're somehow separate from the rest of the universe. You're not, dear friends, yeah? So, what we know about being human is what we experience through all of you. You've heard this many times. 
yeah it, it's just that you are more focused on attached to uh yeah your human experience we are not attached to your human experience we can have compassion sympathy empathy uh, uh yeah receptivity all of that but we're not limited by those experiences but when we come together in this wondrous way dear friends yeah and you've all done great work here today to help us refine how to connect with you in this powerful time dear friends what we want to say to you is it really is about trusting your hearts and dear ones that's what we get to do here through the channel and that's what we get to do in every situation and circumstance where human beings are open and receptive to it so we're not either uh separate from or attached to the human experience we're a part of it just as you are a spiritual being how do you like that very nice very nice it's a big old paradox isn't it karen it is a paradox and 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 someone says something in the chat that i want to read to you which i think is quite beautiful actually two people said something and and i and i and i understand the um the the mentality behind it and, and maybe also can give some clarity as to sort of the line of questioning that went along um today but um paula who's a very frequent contributor she says our experiences bring about dismay upon us at the time and love and light doesn't fix the problem in hand other than to allow us to know we'll get through it and then tracy followed it up and she said i i understand and i agree i feel like i want to be validated when someone knows who i am and knows their truth i know that it's just ego but it's frustrating god bless you well dear friend yeah those are both beautiful statements karen did you want to say something as well well i just wanted to say that you know knowing who you are when you're talking about higher intelligence and, and because i channel theos and theos is the same so this is one of the things that i can really speak truth Indeed. to power on this Indeed. is that knowing who you are is knowing who you are in the highest sense of that you are this divine energy and the the pure desire of a being like we're talking with now or beings and the pure desire of say theos is to let you remember that and the remembering of that is really the hardest thing of the human yes you know? yes and so that constant reminder it's one thing to say yes i know that you're a being you're suffering and of course that's true and much love to everyone that is suffering and having the, the hardest of times yeah. um, but if if in the moment if you can be allowing as you sit here and listen if yeah. you can be allowing to open yourself up to remembering the, that to having that union with your divine spark it puts in perspective right. the problems it puts in perspective the fears because in in fact you know in your divine self you don't have those things so yes there are channelers that come in and they talk to you like a guy that you met at the bar who just seems to have a good overview on some of the stuff going on and they can talk to you about what's going on in blog on seven or in the pleiades and then there are other beings that come to remind us who we really are yeah and 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 that's who's here today so the frustration and the resistance that some people feel for that is because it's a big it's a big thing to let go of a lot of the stuff that we're holding on to that we think are our limitations, but they're only what we think are our limitations. There is no limitation. And letting go of that yeah. is, is the growth, is, yeah. the, is the big job. God bless you, dear friend. Beautifully said. Yeah. We, you see, yeah, where, where, where to bring it now? God bless you, Karen. Um, dear friends, your pain and fear are not anything that we're unconscious of or uncaring about, but they are not our pain and fear, as, as our friend has just said here. They, that is your level of growth, your level of experience at the moment, temporary, yeah, moving through it. And dear friends, it is your motivator so far for your own spiritual awakening back into love and light. So as we, was said here so beautifully, dear friends, we can open the door for you and we do that very well you need to allow yourself permission to trust what is expressed here deeply enough to be willing to walk through the door and to feel what is being offered and not just think about it does it make sense Karen? yeah it makes perfect sense it makes very good sense to me 
Thank you, Jessica. So, are there any other questions? Um, the, um, Richard was asking in the chat if if you all were in the Pleiades, and no, I just use that as an example. No, uh, they are they use seven stars as a symbol, but they don't in fact have a name. Um, they are. Uh, divine consciousness, and they are sort of what would you call the Vahe Guru, which is the supreme inner guru. And Guru, you know, the inner one, or any guru, is, is Gu means uh, darkness and Ru means light. And it is basically the inner guru that brings you from darkness into light. And that is the role of your higher self, your inner, your inner knowing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's right. Dear friends, your higher self, all of us here, we love you unconditionally and we accept you totally and we do absolutely everything within our power here to help you to feel that, to know that, and to remember that that is so. The, the phrase here that comes to mind, dear friends, is as the human experience is in such a powerful and profound time of shifting and healing and awakening is simply this. You've created a dream that's so real, you've forgotten that you've created it, and you've forgotten that it's a dream. When uh, either through devotion and surrender, God bless you, or through crisis and chaos, yeah, you are thrown back or surrender back into the depth of yourself. You will, as our friend has said here so beautifully and eloquently, begin to find your light and move beyond your darkness. Dear friends, begin to find your truth and move beyond the illusions. You'll begin to find that which is eternal, true today, tomorrow, and forever, and let go of that which is a temporary consolation to keep you distracted or attached to that which is no longer true. Dear friends, we love you. We thank you for this time. We'll let the channel come back in. Peace and blessings. Namaste. Namaste. So, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yep. Yeah. Fun. Thanks, everyone. Thank I'm, I'm in for all of it, whatever it looks like. <laughs> Sometimes it looks different than you think. You betcha. I'm, mm. I'm signed up for the whole for the whole thing. The whole kit and caboodle. Do you want to? Do you want us to? Do you want to leave us on a with a blessing or a sort of a little meditation, maybe? Uh, sure. Sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just uh, say a little prayer here. I think, which is how I like to close out my my morning prayers. Thanks for everyone's great questions. And I know we all come from very different realities and very different orientations. And uh, I know perhaps I'm not uh, the way that some people experience channeling and spirit and all that, but I appreciate your openness. Well, you're exactly how you are and you're perfect in that way. So thank, thank your, you. Your, your wisdom and, and your, your contributions are well, well respected and well desired. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Sure, you're welcome. My pleasure. So I just invite you to turn within and take a deep breath. And these are the prayers that I close my morning prayer with. I start with uh, Patricia Kodorovals. I am my I am presence. And I am one with the I am presence of my father, mother, God, the company of heaven, and every man, woman, and child evolving on this earth. I give heartfelt and sincere thanks for the sacred gift of my life. And I ask my I am presence to consecrate every thought, word, action, and feeling towards more love and more light for myself and my world. This is Paul Selig. I know who I am in truth. I know what I am in truth. I know how I serve in truth. I am here. I am here. I am here. And this is St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is sorrow, joy, where there is darkness, light. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are forgiven, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Father, Mother, God, and dwelling Holy Presence, we thank and bless this beautiful circle, and we bless everyone in it. And we know that truly we are of one heart, one mind, one soul, and one purpose. We invite you to shine your light and share your love in through and as each and every one of us 
and we give thanks for this time together. We know that we are safe, loved, and supported, and that those that we love are also likewise safe, loved, and supported. For this and more than words can say, we're grateful and thankful. We let it be, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Much love to you. Thank you, sweetheart. All Peace right. and blessings. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Have a great, great one. Yeah. Oh no, I was just going to say just uh, just some announcements before we go. But uh, I can know if you want to if you want to go out, you're you're fine to go. So. Sure. Uh, can I give you an announcement? Um, yes, please do. Yes. Thanks. Thanks so much. Sorry, I forgot about that. No, yeah. you're okay. You're Blue okay. Dot EU, by the way. <laughs> Right, there you go, LouMartin.eu <laughs> or on Facebook, you guys, and one-to-one um, uh, -one sessions and uh, group chats Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday night at 9 p.m. and uh, morning prayers uh, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. And I'll be on with uh, an interview uh, tonight uh, with a very conscious uh, cancer survivor. We'll talk about emotion, as you heard before, and uh, the whole challenge of our feelings and, and being a man. Peace and blessings. Thanks a million. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm. Bye for now. Bye. So just everyone, this has been the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you haven't become a subscriber, go somewhere. I think it's over there. And uh, push subscribe and you will get notifications of all of our latest webinars next week uh, for two weeks in a row we'll have jim charles and then the week after that we'll have max so we've got a, a full schedule for september also on the 21st of september we will be doing a um international peace day celebration and we will be chanting for peace praying for peace talking about peace um, if we have anybody in the group here that would like to contribute on that day just please send me a message and if you want to do a 15 minute or 20 minute blessing meditation you are absolutely invited and welcome to do it we're going to do it as many hours as we have people so far we're at about five hours so <laughs> i might need my gatorade and also, too, if you would like to support Human Colony, perfect, Michelle. If you would like to support Human Colony, just go to uh, hukalo.org forward slash webinars. And for $10 a month, you can support us um, in all of the endeavors that we're doing. And it just helps us keep the lights on. So thank you very much for tuning in and much love to you. Bye. Thank you, Karen, for the different people that you get to challenge. I think we really do need to hear. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to say something about that to, to to the group here. And we as people who participate in webinars, our channelers are not here to perform for us. They are not circus acts. They're not here to do tricks. They're here to share their inner knowing, whatever that will be and from whatever aspect it will be. And I think that that's something that needs to be appreciated and respected. It, 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 it should be. We should be grown up enough people. We should be respectful enough people that we can be open to many different perspectives. And today was not the best example of that. Um, and I think that we can do better. I love every single one of you. It's a joy to be here with you every week. Um, it's a joy to read the chats. It's a joy to interact with the people who show up. Um, so let's do better. Let's embrace all of our teachers because we always, the, the people that we feel resistant to, the people we think we know more, the people we think we could do better, those are the very ones that we need to learn from. So much love to everyone, and I'll see you next week. Namaste.